Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and this is part two of how to make a low poly animal. In this episode we'll be smartening up our animals, in this case a giraffe, and adding a bit of lighting and rendering. And remember you can visit my website for more free courses just like this one. All the links are in the description. I'll show you a few more points and how you can render it to look nice. But generally this next step is down to a bit of artistic skill in terms of observing objects and trying to mimic them. And it will take a tiny bit of practice. First of all, it'd be helpful if I had this front view in the right position. So if I go into object mode, I could obviously take my object, rotate it, and then line my reference image up. But I may as well select on my reference image, Shift D to duplicate. So I've got a duplicate here. I'll right click and it will go in exactly the same place. And then I'll rotate it in the Z axis 90 degrees. I'll grab it in the X axis, G then X, and pull it back into position. And then I'll go into the side view with three on my numpad and grab it and move it into the center. So I'll grab it on the Y axis to about there. Its head is slightly out of kilter, but that doesn't matter. Now with my object selected, let's go into wireframe mode and see how far out I am. So what I'm going to need to do, I'll go back to solid for a moment and edit mode. I want to create a loop cut down the middle here so I can give it some curviness and I want to sort of round off these edges. So in face mode, I can select these three faces here and maybe this one too, and just grab them in the Y axis and pull them in for the giraffe's head. Let's go to our side view so we can see if we're getting the right size. So G and Y, pull that in. Don't overlap the other line, otherwise that will cause you problems. So some around there. And then I want to select, and then I want to select this area down here or these lines, these edges in edge mode. Go along and select those. And I want to pull those in G and then Y and pull them right in. And now we can look at our reference image and start adapting this towards it. So just grabbing some edges and pulling them in as you see fit. So I'm grabbing those together, pulling those in, and these ones along here. Just moving around in 3D, grab and pull them in. So we've got a bit of a curve. This edge needs to come in, so G in the Y axis and slowly start making a rounded curve. I grab this edge here and pull it upwards, pull this one downwards. So we're getting a sort of giraffe look at the front there. And you can see the cheeks come out a bit. So I'm going to need to grab this one in the Y axis like that. And this one needs to be pulled in the Y axis as well for the neck. I can go to front view for that to make that easier. So I move around to grab the object and then into front view to see how close I need to get it. I can always go to wireframe with Z and choose wireframe and I can see that's still a bit thick. So I can select those two, grab and pull them in. This one and the one in the background there. It's a little bit tricky to see, but remember you can go into solid mode. I'm just used to it so I can see them a bit easier. And let's grab these edges here back into solid mode. And I'm going to get this one and this one as well. And I'm going to scale them down so they become sort of curvy like this. And I can move this one back up. And it's just adapting a shape now and creating the curve and the basic shape of the giraffe. So grabbing these edge points that are very square at the moment and pulling them in so it's more rounded. And what you might find is that your legs are very rectangular. So you may want to do control R and a loop cut down the middle. So if I do a loop cut there and I can move it across, but I want it to stay in the middle so I can right click and it will stay right in the center. And then I can scale this in the Y axis, get S then Y and it will become more rounded. I'm looking mainly at my legs at the moment to see if they're round and then I can grab this edge here and just pull it inwards. And that will look fairly decent. Same with the back leg, control R down the middle there. Right click and left click to set and then right click to set it in that position. So it's always in the middle with right click. Scale in the Y, looking mainly at the legs and then I can pull this one back into position. 
I can round these edges out by just grabbing them downwards. And the same with this point here. And I can pull these upwards. I've got an extra one selected there. Pull these upwards. And I'm going to create some sort of tail around here. Now it would probably be helpful to have another loop cut down here. So Control R and set that in the middle there. But do notice that we've got a lot of topology around here that might get a bit awkward. So be careful adding those loop cuts. Let's go to side view and see how fat we want to make our giraffe. So I'm going to press G then Y to pull that out really slightly so it's got more of a curve. And I want to create a tail out the end here. So one of the last things I'll do is the tail and the ears. So I'll just move this into position so it creates a square. Grab the end face into side view and extrude that out. So grabbing, rotating and scaling and pulling it out until you've got a tail. So at the moment that's a bit rough so I can grab these edges in here with Alt left click and rotate them round, scale them in if I need to and adapt them as needed. Now what's happened here is that I've scaled this in so far that it's joined together in the middle. Remember I've got clipping turned on, so I've accidentally joined them and squished them together in the middle there. And to get around that problem, you can turn clipping off and select your face and grab it and pull it out. And that will work. Or just undo those steps and be a bit more careful. <laughs> If you ever need to zoom into a point, you can press zero on your numpad and that will zoom you right into an area. And then you can sort out any issues like this. So my topology is overlapping itself. If I go to vertex mode, I can just pull this out a bit more. And this one over here, pull them together, turn my clipping back on. And now they'll stick in the middle like that. Much neater. Now you may find that your giraffe is slightly unbalanced because you've chosen to do two legs that aren't quite in the middle. You can, if you want to create an asymmetrical creature, turn the mirror off and then move one leg. So if I go into wireframe, for example, I can select all this area with B to box select and select all those like that. And then I could move those backwards, G then X, and I could move those backwards. And if I had applied my mirror, it would only be happening to one side. And then I can select that edge loop there, pull that backwards, and get it into a slightly more balanced position. Obviously, with doing this with mirror on, it will create a completely symmetrical giraffe. You can also press Alt-A to deselect everything, C to circle select, and you can circle select the load with left click, and then right click to get out of circle mode, G, and then X, and then I can select this edge loop, G, then X. And now we've got a slightly more balanced giraffe, which is looking quite good. So at this point, I'm going to tidy it up, put some horns in using the extrude tools and some ears, and just tidy up the mesh by moving vertices around. So always look at back at your reference image and adjust your shape accordingly. Something that might be helpful if I press C to circle select these end vertices and go up to vertex and smooth vertices, kind of just smooths them out quite nicely. And you can change the tool settings here, put the smoothing up somewhere around there, looks good, and then move it back into position. I think it's really important to get the shape right before adding any extra small vertices and points and ears and things like that. You may find you need more vertices on the head that's where you'll possibly need a bit more detail. So you can see me here just smartening up these edges. I'm basically in vertex mode most of the time and just pulling out vertices and making it sure it links up with my background shape. Here I'm just extruding a face out for these horns and the same for the ears. You can also use the inset tool to create an extra face if you need it or the loop cut tools as well. So lastly, in terms of rendering, let's hide our empties so we can press the 
eyes here and actually the cameras here that will stop them showing up in rendered view as well. Let's go into object mode with our shape and make sure our giraffe is on top of our axes here. So when we add a plane in a second, he'll be standing on top of it. That's great. Shift A, mesh plane. So now that he's got a floor to stand on as well, and that looks good. And we can set up a bit of lighting with our lights here. We can go to the lighting panel down here and we can change this to something like a sunlight so that the giraffe has a nice lot of light on him. But we can't really see what's going on. So let's go to the shading tab over here. So shading. And now we get an idea of what our scene's going to look like. I can go to my render settings over here. At the moment I'm in Eevee. Cycles will give you a better result and Eevee will render much faster. But in this case, it's quite a low poly object. So I'm going to use cycles because it should render fairly quickly anyway. I can change my device to the GPU and that will speed it up a bit more. At the moment I'm in look dev mode, which is not quite a rendered mode. So rendered mode is next to it there. And you can see exactly what it's going to look like when it renders out. If you want to change the color at all of your animal, click on your animal and you can create some nodes in here with the new by pressing new here. And you've got the base color here. So let's make him sort of giraffe colored, a bit sort of orangey. You've got the shininess here. Generally low poly objects are quite rough rather than shiny. Or if you want to, you can go really shiny and make him metallic and all weird like that. But you can have some fun playing with these. I'm going to duplicate this light, but I'm going to do it in top view. So seven on my numpad, shift D and duplicate. And I'll rotate it by grabbing that ye yellow point. And once more, seven to top view, shift D to duplicate and rotate it. So I've got a basic three point lighting system there. And that offers quite nice lighting for most objects. If you want to know how to do a turntable animation, I'll put a link in the description now. But hopefully this has helped you make a low poly animal. And with a bit of practice, you should be able to do one of these in about 30 minutes. If you'd like a copy of this model or like to support me, then I've got a Patreon page and it's available there for my Patreons. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.